On this week's show, Jeff Johnston heads out for a weekend camping trip and gives us an in-depth look at the new Ram 3500 pickup and Coachman Freedom Express Blast Toy Hauler. Also, we'll head to Tucson, Arizona and join Michelle Fontaine at the 59th Annual Escapees RV Club Escapade, where she learns all about this popular club and the many services it provides its members. Later in the show, Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 show us how to repair a tear in your RV roof. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, we're available, is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. A well-chosen matchup between a tow rig and trailer can make a world of difference in fun and safe RV travel. For our road test, we paired a new 2019 Ram 3500 pickup with the Coachman Freedom Express Blast 283BL toy hauler, a trailer loaded with features and accommodations designed with dirt toy lovers in mind. Our feature Ram was rated to tow in excess of 14,000 pounds, so the Coachman trailer's 6,500 pound unloaded vehicle weight was no serious strain on the truck's capabilities. Be it a truck camper, fifth wheel, or travel trailer, the Ram can do the job. When it's time to get serious about your towing, the Ram 3500 Heavy Duty may be the serious truck you need. With its 6.4 liter Hemi gasoline engine, a killer powertrain, and all the features that you need to make your towing more fun, safer, maybe a little bit more relaxing, this could be a good choice for you. Corporate badging leaves no doubt about what powers this beast. And tucked away under the hood here, we have 410 horsepower and 429 pounds feet of Hemi engine excitement. Variable cam timing and a cylinder multi-displacement system help the engine produce maximum power and fuel economy. It's also very smooth running. Rugged styling with no frills detailing maintains that sturdy ram image throughout. The bighorn trim level is stylish and tasteful. And the back end of the new Ram is just as high-tech as the rest of the truck. Down here in the bumper, you have the backup monitor sensors, which provide safe backing and parking. Center mounted here is the backup camera, and that's directly over the hitch. So when you're backing up to a trailer by yourself, you can position the ball under the hitch a lot easier thanks to the camera. Pre-wired four-wire and seven-wire Bargman plugs for the trailer. And if you've got a really big trailer to tow, this guy can handle 17,000 pounds plus. The optional tri-fold tonneau cover unlatches and folds back for bed loading clearance or fifth wheel trailer use. Factory installed mounting points make fifth wheel hitch use a breeze. The Ram has finely civilized cab features. Let's go inside and take a look. Very nice. This is the first time that I've been in a standard cab modern truck in a long time. They've grown standard cabs a lot. Plenty of leg room even for a tall guy. Lots of headroom even. And this is the Bighorn trim level, which is not the, the highest trim level they have. It's a very nice, tasteful assemblage of colors. Different shades of gray on the, fabric, on the material here. A little bit of polished nickel adds this touch of class. And uh, easier to see instruments. Very easy to control HVAC. Got the integrated brake control right here where you need to grab it in an emergency. Uh, all things considered, it's, it's decorated and nice enough that it's, it's classy and, and, and contemporary, but it's not so fancy that a serious truck guy isn't going to feel good about being in a truck like this. Clean and functional instruments are always a joy to see in a motor vehicle. The usual center stack arrangement is functional and uncomplicated. Shifting is via a rotary knob, 
It takes some getting used to, but it's not bad. A suitable glove box is needed for that massive owner's manual. The center console houses a handy storage organization area and flips up for three across seating. A built-in plastic storage tray behind the seats will help corral hardware that goes with the truck. The Ram's civilized at-rest demeanor continues in its natural habitat, the highway. Piloting a rig this size through a tight urban neighborhood calls for paying close attention to your surroundings. It's out on the open road that the Ram and Coachman combo really shines. Our Coachman toy hauler was no stress for the Ram's steering, braking, and acceleration performance. Cranking a lash up this size around takes some pre-planning, like when making a U-turn. It's a real pleasure to be behind the wheel of the Dodge 3500 when towing. It's a good, solid platform. The suspension is ultra-stable. It's really a, a good, rugged, old-school style truck. And we've got a trailer on there that's not a maximum load for this particular combination. But uh, boy, it just follows down the road. It's been stable. We've been up and down around the curves here at the coast and down the valleys. Um, it's quiet. The gas engine you can hear uh, very little noise out of it. The transmission always picks out the right gear. It never quite lets the engine rev too high or drop too low and lug. There's the remote switches, of course, on the front and back of the, of the wheel, so you don't need to take your hands off the wheel to go and touch something and control something. It rides a bit firmly, but what do you expect? It's a 3500 series or a one-ton truck. We didn't find it objectionably stiff, even for around town driving. Gusty, unexpected crosswinds produce no white-knuckle anxiety when driving this setup. We'll be right back with more about the Ram 3500 truck and Coachman toy hauler, so stay tuned! Aquacam Tossins, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Toy hauler trailers are extremely popular today, and the Coachman Freedom Express we tested with the Ram 3500 truck is a good example of that RV type. The Ram did its expected good job of hauling the trailer to Riley Ranch County Park. ParkSense rear park assist helps when solo, but towing, you'll want to shut it off to avoid hearing the alarm when backing up with the trailer. These new trucks have a lot of really fun features, but one thing about today's modern pickups that I'm really a little bit puzzled about and all the manufacturers are doing it, they're making the beds higher and higher. Now I'm about six foot six, and if I have something I want to put in the bed, like firewood, it's a reach over for someone my size. Now if you happen to be a normal size adult, a little bit shorter, this can be quite a chore. Fortunately, this particular Coachman trailer has a solution to that. We have a really cool metal rack up here directly above the batteries that's a cargo rack. It can be used to put a generator on there, just about anything. As you can see, we have it piled up with our campfire wood for the night. It's a nice feature. More trailers ought to have this. The forward cargo rack makes good use of the open space above the trailer batteries. 
the new Freedom Express Blast from Coachman Industries. Coachman, of course, is a name that we've known for a long time in the RV industry. A lot of our parents, maybe even grandparents, use Coachman products. This is the model 283BL toy hauler. Everything from approximately this point back is all garage. And we'll show you more details about that when we get inside. Out here, you have smooth fiberglass sidewalls and a LumaCage construction, meaning the walls and ceiling are all framed with aluminum. And it has As Asdell composite underneath the exterior skin, which is part of what gives it its certified green compliance by TRA certification. And that's kind of a nice thing to have today. The axles are spaced out a little bit. This is to apparently increase stability and such when you're driving. We towed this thing and boy, it just followed along behind the truck like a dream. Now up here, the solar panel you see by GoPower, it's a 120 watt unit. This is optional. Now the only exterior storage they have on this unit is up front, but it goes all the way through and it's a really good sized compartment. So there's a lot of long things that you can stash in here. And there's also a convenient tray that's strong enough to support something uh, oh, like a generator. We used it for a pile of firewood. That is a really neat item which helps to keep the dirty stuff out of your vehicle and out of the inside of the trailer, especially if you have critters like uh, the giant spider that my wife found on one of the pieces of wood and decided she had loaded enough pieces of wood for the day. I finished that little job. The front also has a power jack, which takes a lot of the work out of it. Around on the other side, we have the appliance connections and so on. Let's take a look at them. As per usual practice, all of the trailer utility connections are grouped on the driver's side. The garage door loading ramp unlatches easily and can be opened or closed by one reasonably able-bodied person. Coil springs on the ramp hinge provide most of the needed weight support. This Model 283BL has a lot of your typical toy hauler features. Number one, the garage comes right up to this point approximately. So the back of the stove and the back of the refrigerator cabinet, it's living up front and it's garage out back and living, but we'll look at that in a minute. Up front, we have a conventional queen size RV walk around bed. There are shirt wardrobes on either side, storage overhead, and a pair of really bright overhead LED reading lights available plus plenty of plug-ins and, of course, USB connections. It's a split bath arrangement on either side of the hall. On the driver's side, you have the toilet and shower facility. Over here on the passenger side, you have an overhead cabinet with a mirror so you can get beautified after your ride. The sink, good size sink actually, little storage cubby for your toiletries and more storage underneath. All very conveniently located. Over here on the curb side, you got a good size refrigerator, lots of room, there's a little bit of storage overhead, the furnace is down underneath. Now over here in the kitchen area, boy, this is really nicely done for even enthusiastic cooks. You got a really large single bowl sink, that's the kind of big sink that RVers have been asking about for a long time, with a faucet that sticks out far enough that you can get things under it to clean them. The stove is a Furion three burner with oven, which is kind of handy. Convenient flip fold glass top that works well. Furion microwave oven overhead and an interesting variety of storage places. You got enclosed cabinets with these almost retro looking stained glass or glass finish doors and overhead cubby holes with these elastic sec securement nets. There's a bar stool height dinette table curbside with a great window view that folds away when not in use. With the sofa beds folded flat, there's maximum storage space in the garage. Fold the seats up and lower them and you have lots of seating space for guests. Flip the seat backs over and they make into a queen size bed. The Lippert power mechanism lowers the main bed from the ceiling and you also have the large lower bed available. Coachman and Lippert seriously need to supply a printed instruction manual for these operations. And when you have more people to eat than just the two that would sit at the little dinette table, 
you have this cool little portable table that stores in, the, in a slot in the storage compartment up front. And that becomes your additional dining space. The Ram 3500 and Coachman Toy Hauler are an effective combination. We enjoyed our time with the trailer and truck. We think you would too. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you to our friends at Garrity RV in Junction City, Oregon for use of this trailer. To learn more about the Ram Truck or Coachman Freedom Express trailer, log on to our website at rollinontv.com. Forest River, we not only build great RVs, we build award-winning RVs. Check out our complete product line at forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. I'm Michelle Fontaine on assignment for Rolling on TV. And we're here today covering the 59th Escapade Reunion. We're a very inclusive club. We incorporate people that are full-timers, people that are weekenders, people that, you know, maybe are snowbirders, and uh, there's no discrimination between motorhome, trailer, fifth wheel, camper. We have everybody infected. Escapade, we've actually had people in tents. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that haven't chosen their RV yet, so they come, they get all the education, and then they go find something. That's kind of smart. Well, the Escapers is probably the newest, it is mm -hmm. the fastest growing segment of the Escapees RV Club. And that is the young working folks that have chosen a different lifestyle, not to be in bricks and mortar places mm -hmm. and go into the office every day. What they can do nowadays with technology is they can be on the road and they can be anywhere and work from there remotely. Full-time families are a growing part of Escapees RV. Uh, so we're running Kidscapade this week. Um, it's sponsored by Full-Time Families. Uh, and our theme this week is road trips. Full-Time Families is a membership organization um, for families who travel on the road in their RVs. So we're all full-timers. Um, and we all travel with our children. Our education, we use road schooling, which is a version of homeschooling. We just finished up our largest event of the year in Florida, uh, in Madison. We had 70 families join us for our family reunion. 190 kids, and it was a great time. And this Amazing. is the fastest growing segment. Yes, it Which is not surprising. Yes. Uh, Full-time Families is hosting 17 events around the country this year. Everything from education themes to a trip up to Alaska and a trip down to Mexico, so. Do people join? Your organization have to be escapees? Um, there is a reciprocal, so if they are escapees, they're also full-time families. You can go to www.fulltimefamilies.com and find out all the information about full-time families, as well as a Facebook presence. You can join all one of our 37 groups. So we have all different categories and segments. So. And is that full-time one word, no dash? No dash. Well, thank you so yeah, much, thanks, Jill. Michelle. I'll let you get back to your kids. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And we also hold a boot camp at, right before. There's three days of boot camp. It's actually two and a half full days of training. And, and it's really geared toward people that are new to RVing. It goes all over all of the systems in the RV. It talks about um, tire safety and fire safety and your water system, your, you know, just all the systems that go along with it. And it really, and they also help teach people more about what would be the better RV for them and help them with that and so people come away with a lot more knowledge. Well boot camp teaches you the basics of that and then mm -hmm. when you go to escapade then that just takes it up a whole nother Expands. level. Uh, lifestyles, mm -hmm. where to go, where to camp, what to do, I mean it's just it's really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's yeah. just a lot of good information yeah. here. Thank you so much. 
for speaking with us. Well, and thank you. Giving you a little quiet time. Before yeah, you know, I, I know. Everything. Well, right. we really appreciate you taking the interest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. Talk to us. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank yep. you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. There are 800, over 800 RVs here. 60 something thousand members belong to the Escapees Club. They have taken care of every aspect of what an RVer goes through, where the mail can get delivered, health insurance, assisted living on wheels, every aspect. It's quite an organization. And this reunion has been about community, communication, education, ice cream socials, doggy parks, entertainment, kidscapes, everything you can imagine for five days. It's been a delightful experience. Aquacam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. Aquacam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Welcome back to another RV preventive maintenance series video. When it comes to RV roof care and maintenance, you have preventive maintenance, routine maintenance, and emergency maintenance. Preventive and routine roof maintenance involves inspecting roof seams and sealants and making any required repairs. Emergency RV roof maintenance involves repairing things like punctures and tears in your RV roof when you least expect it. Today we're going to discuss and properly repair a punctured, torn, or damaged RV roof. When you head out on an RV trip, you never know when your RV roof might be damaged by a puncture or tear. Something I always keep in my RV toolbox is a patch and rubber roof repair tape. This die seal patch by DICOR can handle most emergency roof repairs you might encounter. This particular patch can be used on EPDM rubber, TPO, fiberglass, plastic, wood, steel, and aluminum products. Today I'll demonstrate making the roof repair on our mock-up RV roof, but always remember to exercise caution whenever you work on the RV roof. A fall can cause serious injury or worse. The first thing you do after you discover a puncture or tear in the roofing material is clean the surrounding area thoroughly. I start by using a rubber roof cleaner. Next, rinse the area with clean water and let it dry completely. As a final preparation, use a cloth dampened with denatured alcohol. Start by peeling off a couple inches of the release liner. It's important you apply the patch exactly where you want it the first time. If you attempt to remove the patch after it makes contact with the roof, it can damage the tape or the roofing material. Do not stretch the patch. Press down firmly, start in the center, and work towards the outside edges, removing any bubbles. You want to prevent any openings or tunnels in the edges of the patch for the patch to work effectively. The final step of the repair is to run a bead of sealant around the perimeter of the patch. Make sure the sealant you use is compatible with the roofing material. That's how easy it is to repair a puncture or tear in your RV roof. I mentioned earlier the die seal patch is an excellent product to keep in your RV toolbox for emergency repairs when you're on the road. Just so you know, you can also purchase wider and longer rolls of repair tape to repair more extensive damage. To learn more about using and caring for your RV, take a minute to visit RVOnlineTraining.com. Happy camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos, stories, and RV news, visit our website at RollingOnTV.com. 
You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. As usual, this has been another fun production. <laughs>